In today's workshop scenario showcase, we take a look at a mission called No Man's Land, created by Mortarius Hunter. No Man's Land is based on the lore created in the official East Wing campaign, and in quoting the creator, this mission aims to show how the NATO assault on the main airport on the island of Altis two weeks after the beginning of the war in Stratis could have been. The mission is divided into three stages, each of which attempts to cover different aspects of modern warfare, from simple skirmishes in the rear to a full-scale combined assault." End quote. Now, whilst the assault itself in the third section is pretty spectacular, it's what the creator does in the build-up sections which really impressed me. And you know what? It's all the small stuff, guys. It really is. Before we go any further, I better let you know that yes, there is a mod requirement, and it's named ONT Expansion Eden. Weighing in at a not so whopping 25.5 megabytes, guys it's literally a mouse click and a couple of seconds these days, and should not deter any vanilla purists out there. And to be fair, it's only a mod that allows the creator to access locked vanilla assets such as trees, signs, graffiti, or items considered as debug. So for those who don't like modded gameplay, not to worry guys, it was simply a mod to unlock more assets for the creator, it doesn't actually include anything. You start the mission in a nicely laid out operation centre, seemingly just after finishing a briefing. Object placement is of a very high standard, and the addition of a arsenal to select our own loadout is a very welcome one. Also of note is the nice little gesture towards community members who have played the creator's previous missions here on the whiteboard. Exiting the operations centre, you're greeted by a quite natural feeling staging area. Soldiers are having conversations, although not voice, they do appear in text form. Stuff like a marksman briefing his fellow squaddies about the finer points of windage and humidity when taking shots, to chats over busted equipment and who actually started the war. There's also a segment with civilians. The creator isn't afraid to show the other side of the conflict, as you'll see in a moment. You then head towards your chopper, and as you do, artillery starts opening up and the convoy is about to move out. You then select the phase of the operation. Guys, please play it from phase one. The pacing from the opening to act three is just perfect and needs to be experienced in its entirety. Once you're on the ground, it's Altus. It's familiar, yet it's a little bit different. The first bit isn't really about shooting, it's more about getting into the situation at hand and really immersing yourself. The creator has used object placement in much of a similar vein as Tomahawk's missions, but it feels slightly more open and fluid. We'll touch on this momentarily. The way the civvies watch your every move and run away when you get close sparks really ominous vibes. And this scene, something so simple, two civvies just set to kneel by a body and run off as you close him by. Were they looting? Were they helping? It makes it feel a lot more grounded and gritty. The action to check the dog tags and it comes up with the deceased information, it makes it personal and it really connects you with the mission at hand and I love it. The playable scenes in general feel very war-torn with the signs of military and civilian casualties. Object density is moderately high, but I didn't notice any performance issues. And even though the scenes are very well built and detailed, there's enough of a gap left between choke points for the AI to path through, move and engage you. In this particular department, it generally does a better job than many of the cinematic missions that have gone before it, which feature rich environments but static AI. Don't get me wrong though, there is still some deviously placed static AI for you to contend with, but it feels fair and rewarding when you locate them. On top of the pretty gritty feeling, the mission does offer some wholesome cinematic moments, and a couple of the scenes have seemed to take inspiration from Band of Brothers and Saving Private Ryan. I don't know if it was intentional, but take this scene for example. Approaching a town via road, the infantry hugging the sides of the approach, and all of a sudden an MG opens up and all hell breaks loose. I then immediately had flashbacks to the Band of Brothers episode where they're approaching the town of Carantan. The fight to eliminate the sniper or snipers around the town, which by the way are no joke let me tell you, feels like saving Private Ryan. And again, civilians make an appearance and they made me myself 
on more than one occasion just by running out in front of me as I rounded corners. So keep your trigger finger in check, guys. The general ambience of the mission, especially before and after clearing an area of enemies, is top notch. There's small bursts of fire followed by dogs barking and just random civvy noises. It feels so very much alive even with all the devastation what's gone on. Phase 2 also includes little nods to the official armor lore, which could relate to either the Eastwind or the virus that's part of CSAT's Apex Protocol. Now on to the third section. Well, what can I say? You're in for a tree. It's a combined arms assault that sweeps through the outlaying defenses to the airport. And the best way I can describe it is it it's like riding a wave. You push up and catch up the initial advance, then clever trigger work pushes the assault again as you close in. The creator must have had to test this particular passage of play extensively, because in my opinion it's perfect. You feel the weight of the advance you're taking part in, the enemies mutually supporting firing positions acting as wave breakers that inevitably crumble under the onslaught. It's definitely an experience that left me thinking, wow, that was pretty bloody decent. And the ending, it, I don't know, it really, really struck a chord with me after the intensity of the final assault. It's it's sober and it's it's actually quite, how do I put it, it's, it's quite chilling to be honest guys. Again, this is another linear style mission I've covered, but I think the experience does differ, you know, quite substantially from what I've previously covered to warrant another so soon. Just try it out for yourselves and see if you agree with the aspects I've raised in the video. Link to the mission, as always, is included in the description box below. So there we have it guys and girls, another really well produced and catered experience within Armour Free. I'll obviously continue browsing the workshop for more noteworthy missions, and I'll see you all over in the next one. Bye!